Time for another of these unedited videos. You, you might hear some yacht rock coming from downstairs. There's a bunch of repairmen fixing the house up currently, and they're particularly fond of like 70s yacht rock, so just pay no mind to that. I, I want to talk about another episode of Night Gallery, because for whatever reason, my Night Gallery video, which I put out like three years ago, has just been getting crazy views. And all these Night Gallery fans, who I guess never thought critically about Night Gallery and never, like, analyzed the episodes as anything beyond just, like, popcorn fluff, are getting pissy about how uh, I dislike some of the episodes. Because I guess, you know, Twilight Zone's been thought about critically for years, uh, but nobody's ever bothered to do that with Night Gallery, you know, because it's more underrated. So uh, the fact that I, like apply a, a bit of thought to these episodes and like how they're written uh, that seems to uh, offend some people who don't prefer to think of Night Gallery in like a, an analytical lens but you know I'm sorry uh, you can analyze anything through an analytical lens and I think Night Gallery is really interesting because it does have a lot of dumb shit it, it does have a lot of dumb shit in it um, and I'm going to point that out, you know, if there's dumb shit, because I think Night Gallery can teach the average horror author, of which I, I'm one, uh, it can teach the average horror author a lot about how to write uh, a monster, how not to write a monster. Tons of shit. You can learn a lot from Night Gallery, both from its successes and its failures. You can learn a lot from where Night Gallery fucks up. Uh, and one of those examples is The Caterpillar. Uh, the Caterpillar is a terribly written episode. What I mean when I say that is that uh, what happens in it just could not fucking happen. Uh, it, it's physically impossible, and at the same time, it offers no supernatural explanation. Uh, there's no problem with a horror story where something outrageous happens, uh, but it's, it's explained supernaturally. Because supernaturally means that, you know, it, it's beyond the parameters of reality, right? So, like, for instance, uh, if Pennywise, you know, shapeshifts in, into a, a, a big bird or whatever and chases Mike Hanlon through the construction zone, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Because Pennywise is a supernatural creature who operates on rules that are distinct from that of the natural world. Uh, a good example directly from Night Gallery is A Fear of Spiders, which I think was on my, my top five best list. Uh, because... There's giant spiders in it, right? But it, it's explained within the episode that the spiders are caused by, by the guy's upstairs neighbor, who's a witch. Like, she's very clearly a witch, and she's obviously doing all this shit to him. And so uh, I don't mind that. It makes sense. You know, she's a witch. She can do witchy things, and she can make giant spiders. Or it's all in his head, you know? Maybe it's all in his head. Fine. You know, whatever. Great episode, great fucking episode, because uh, it's just tossed in there. Oh, you know, it's magic. Okay, uh, the caterpillar is different, because the caterpillar doesn't feature any supernatural elements, right? The, the monster is a fucking earwig, right? And I have, a, I have a problem with this, because not only is the plot shamelessly plagiarized from a shitty urban legend that I've heard a gajillion fucking times, right? The plot makes no sense, right? It, the earwig goes into this guy's ear. Like, he hires the, this fucking earwig peddler to put the earwig in the ear of his romantic rival who looks nothing like him, but this idiot puts it uh, or, like, I guess the idiot hires someone else to put it in so that it gets put in his ear. Right off the bat, the, the whole plot happens due to a contrivance because if this earwig business was competent, they just put it in the right fucking ear, right? Um, but earwigs don't go in people's ears. It, it's an etymological falsehood. Earwigs aren't called earwigs because they go in people's ears. They're called earwigs because their, their hind legs look like ears when they're unfolded. Um, and, like, it's like if you, if you thought that a milkman was like a hybrid between a cow and a human. Um, that, you know, that's just not true. So stop saying that earwigs go in people's ears. That just doesn't fucking happen. It's never happened. 
uh, and I'm not scared by a story about something that's never happened. Like if there was a, a story about, ooh, I got razor blades in my candy this Halloween, I'm not scared by that because it's been proven that this has never fucking happened. It's made up. It's bullshit. And you're just fear-mongering about something that doesn't happen. Uh, Cujo is a good example of a story that, that uh, features a scary animal. But it makes sense because dogs can get rabies and they can get vicious if they get rabies. So it's realistic. There aren't any supernatural elements in Cujo. It's just a story about, about a vicious dog. But it works because it's, you know, that can happen. Earwigs don't go inside people's ears. They don't even want to go in people's ears. If I could right now, I'd go outside, get a fucking earwig, bring it in here, and, and put it in like my oracle and see what happened. I guarantee it doesn't want to go in my fucking ear because it can't fucking breathe in there. So this is yet another like complete scientific inaccuracy. Uh, believe it or not, the inside of your head is not a breathable environment and insects, like any other living creature, uh, they need to breathe. So if an earwig is going in there, it's just going to choke on your blood and it actually knows that. It's not fucking stupid. So it doesn't go the fuck in there because it, it just choked to death, right? And uh, I remember my idiot anatomy teacher in high school. She wasn't even like qualified for the job, but she was like just like a gym teacher or something that was like reassigned to anatomy. Um, and she, she was teaching us ear anatomy and like the anatomy of the ear, which is one of the very few things from high school I actually remember because um, it's interesting. It's not like a hole directly through your head. The hole only goes in like an inch, and then it just becomes a, an auditory nerve that goes to your brain that isn't like a physical tunnel. And in the middle ear, there's a tube that goes from your ear down to your throat. So if an ear goes into your ear, somehow manages to break through the eardrum, um, you'll lose hearing completely in that ear forever because it'll have to move past the anvil and hammer and stirrup. Um, but it, it'll go down this tube into your throat, and then you'll probably just swallow it. Uh, it won't go into your brain. There's no actual way to, to get to the brain because there's a bony labyrinth in between, and uh, the earwig ain't going through that. It, it'd much more likely just go through the tube straight down into your throat. Uh, this is basic anatomy. You know, People should understand this, that like, even if it's possible for an earwig to get into your middle ear, it ain't getting into your deep ear. Um, that's just not happening. Uh, you would be in pain, you know, but it, it'd be dead before it got there because it, it'd suffocate in your outer ear because that's just a one-way tube, right? So right off the bat, the, the main problem with the, the caterpillar, I don't even know why it's fucking called that because it's about an earwig. It should just be called the earwig. Uh, the main problem is that its plot is physically impossible and there's no supernatural element uh, to make sense of it. But the biggest problem is that at the end, the guy like survives before the plot twist about the earwig laying eggs, uh, which wouldn't happen because again, no, no self-respecting earwig would lay eggs where they would just die from you know being inside an enclosed suffocating environment. Um, like the human fucking head. Uh, which is all just blood mass. But the main issue is that he survives this and he can hear. Like it's explained that the earwig crawled throughout his entire head from one ear out the other. And not only did he survive with no damage to his brain, but he can hear. That's just not possible. If the earwig crawled through both ears, and through his head, not only would he would he be completely like ruined, like his mind would not fucking work because the earwig would have crawled through like several important centers of the brain that deal with like thought processing, but he'd be deaf in both ears because the earwig would have had to crawl through both fucking eardrums. So it just doesn't make any fucking sense, like. The ear, he'd be he'd be dead at the most, and at the least, deaf and severely fucking brain damaged. And the doctor is just like, oh well, it's a miracle you survived somehow. That that just couldn't happen. That that's just not fucking possible. Um, and 
it, you know, it's stupid. It's a stupid way to write your, your horror monster. You know, a good example is like a, a, the alien from Alien, right? The alien from Alien, uh, when it, you know, bursts out of the guy's fucking chest, uh, the guy doesn't live after, because you're not going to live through that. Because it, it, it's bursting through your fucking chest. There are so many great examples of body horror uh, that, that have consistent writing and consistent universe building and, and function according to an internal logic that maybe isn't the internal logic of our world, but at the very least feels like it, it could really happen. And you suspend your disbelief because you're like, oh, it makes sense. It follows a, a, a well-established pattern. This is bullshit where people are like, oh, horror is about the unknown, which is mainly an idea that's, that was started by that fucking idiot racist Lovecraft. Uh, horror isn't about the unknown. The better you explain your characters and their limitations, this is counterintuitive, the better you explain your monster, the scarier it is. Like the fact that in the thing they know exactly how long it'll take for the thing to completely assimilate the entire human species. The fact that they have a, a fact as well defined as that, uh, that creates fear and tension in and of itself. And it wouldn't be as scary if the thing just like wasn't seen the whole movie. You know, it gets seen because seeing it is scary. It's not scary for it to just be hidden in the dark the whole fucking time. I like seeing monsters, and I like understanding how monsters work, and that's part of the fun, and it's also more scary when you understand how a monster works, when a monster feels well-written. Like, when you understand the, the process of the alien life cycle, how it goes from facehugger to chestburster, and then to the full-grown xenomorph, and you understand the queen and the colony and the eggs and all this shit, you know, there's a lot left up to the imagination, I guess you can say, but you, you understand, like, basically how the alien goes about, and that's more scary, the fact that you understand exactly how this creature invades your body and, and like, how gruesome it is. That's a scary prospect. And so Alien's, like, a great example of well-written body horror that's visceral and, and, and absolutely terrifying, but it works because the alien is a fictional monster and not a real insect that exists in the real world and doesn't do the magical shit that it does in uh, the Night Gallery episode. So, like, just make up a just make up a, a fake magic insect, right? Make up a, a, a magical insect that doesn't exist in the real world and then have it do all this magical shit. Or just have it be like, you know, a, a magical potion that burrows into the guys here or something. There are so many more options. There are so many more options that this episode could have gone with uh, that it didn't. And it doesn't make a, a creature scarier just because, uh, oh, you know, it, it can do crazy things. Like in Jurassic Park, you know, the dinosaurs are scary because they just act like how dinosaurs would act. Like, if the T-Rex could fly, that wouldn't make it scarier, it'd make it stupider, and then I wouldn't be scared anymore because, it, you know, it ruins my fucking suspension of disbelief. Because all of a sudden you're introducing this nonsense uh, that makes your movie into a fucking joke. And the, the comment I got that was trying to defend the Caterpillar uh, said that it was fantasy, which, you know, it's not fantasy, it's horror. Two separate genres, uh, two entirely separate expectations. Even in fantasy, like well-written fantasy, like The Lord of the Rings, there are well-defined limitations to magic, and not just anything can happen. You know, Gandalf can't just, like, trans teleport to fucking Mount Doom and, uh, and, and toss the ring in. You know, they have to physically walk there. Um, that's a good limitation, you know, a, a limitation that creates, like, a, a coherent plot and, and good world building and makes the world feel real because the characters can't just do anything because that would remove like all stakes. Um, Well-written magic systems have limitations and it's the same with horror. Uh, Well-written monsters have limitations and rules and parameters that they abide within and uh, you can't just have anything fucking happen. That's not... that doesn't make something scary, it makes something stupid. And uh, the, the comment even said oh, well, the earwig is just a plot device. And it's like, well, you know, well-written monsters aren't plot devices. They're, they're coherent, fun characters in and of themselves. Pennywise isn't just a plot device. He's, he's an embodiment of chaos. And, and Pennywise is like the gold standard for a, for a fucking monster. 
the Yearwig episode of Night Gallery, you know, I get why some people might be, like, nostalgic about it, but it's fucking embarrassing. It, it's, a, it's a terrible example of writing. Um, it, it's like the fucking, if anyone remembers the scary stories to tell in the dark movie. That's what I'd compare it to, you know, because that has the shitty urban legend about, oh, what if a spider was in your face and it laid its eggs inside your face? Spiders don't do that, so I'm not scared of that because it's just not going to fucking happen. Uh, and I'm not scared of an earwig going in my ear either. It's just this, sh this shitty urban legend affair that's like played out, hackneyed, tired. I've heard it a, a million gajillion fucking times. And I'm sick of people being scared of earwigs for no fucking reason. They don't even bite. They, they, they're just like a, a harmless little insect. And it's so sad that people are scared of them for no fucking reason. And I hear all the time about people who are just irrationally scared of bugs crawling into their ear while they sleep. It's not going to happen, you know? Uh, to, if you're really, really scared, I mean, the nose is a more viable way for uh, insects to get up into your head. I'm pretty sure there are actually some recorded cases of, like, flies laying, like, maggot eggs up there and shit. So if you're actually scared of bugs getting into your head while you sleep, you know, you'd have to, like, clip your nose, but then you couldn't fucking breathe. So, you know, you're kind of fucked either way. So just, you know, don't worry about bugs going in your head. It's, it's a stupid... It's a stupid, irrational fear. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's fucking dumb. And to think that's the, the episode that everyone gets all defensive over. Oh, but, but it's just a made-up. It's a made-up story. Made-up stories can be well-written. They can. They, they can make sense. And, uh, yeah, the, the Caterpillar fucking sucks. And I feel completely justified in saying it's the worst episode of Night Gallery. Because uh, it's fucking stupid. Doesn't make any fucking sense. And, uh, you know, it's just scientifically inaccurate. And if a story doesn't have any supernatural elements, I expect it to function scientifically, uh, which it doesn't. And uh, it's just piss poor writing. The plot is, isn't even good. It's just like, oh, love triangle fucking bullshit. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's shit. F fuck the Caterpillar. Worst Night Gallery episode. Zero out of five stars. Yeah.